Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so we have to do some things, you know, to adjust, create, um, do something to create your own lane to really set yourself apart. Oh, yes, I, when you absolutely. And this is the, the, the time is now. One of the things I say is that those who persevere, those who push through the last two years, the last two years was really training and perseverance and pushing past the pain, right? Exactly. Also, along that journey, those who did that work, they've developed new skills that you can now deploy. And those who didn't do that work, well, it, today is another opportunity to learn because where the world is going, this is the time you're only going to see the ex those who have excellence to offer, right? In the very beginning, everybody was like doing this, doing that. Everybody's a coach, everybody's this. But the longer you are in the game, those who last are the ones who actually have what it takes to last, right? So that's why one of the things I always say is that, you know, there'll be the left behind series in the sense of if people don't race into the future, if people don't adopt new skills, if people don't evolve, if they don't persevere, at the end of the day, it's so tiring, people will give up on that journey. So it's, it's just time to push harder. It, this is the time to just push forward. Exactly. And it's also, you know, the time to see, uh, because there's so many new opportunities open up with the things that have taken place in the last two years. And you just have to be able to see where opportunities are, some areas that are missing, and just be able to fill those uh, pockets. So, Right. Or create yours, <laughs> or like you're doing, or create your own opportunity, create something new and offer something new, as long as you can sell it Right. Mm -hmm. As long as you can package it, you can communicate the value and you can develop the relationships that is tr that trust you. And, you know, all it takes is one time, two times, and then you're, you're, you're ready to go. So yeah, best switch is there. So yeah. What do you think about the topic of today? Uh, what is the topic of the day? I just came in. Uh, mindset, mindset is everything. Oh Absolutely. Mindset is almost, I would say in some cases, mindset is, it's 90% of the job sometimes, you know? Yeah, so I, I sent a newsletter out today. I just wanted to share a few highlights. I, I think the two, the two, the top two things here is one, with your mind, you're not your mind, but with your mind, you experience the world. Mm -hmm. We are not our mind, but our mind actually guides us in navigating the world. Right. The second thing is that with our words, spoken and written, the world experiences us through our words. So it's this two way street. The world comes in to our mind. We use our mind to experience the world. And then we use our words, spoken, written, right? Yeah. Through the words that we, we share, things we write, things we speak, the world around us experiences us. They experience our thoughts. You know, like the Bible talks about um, out of the abundance of the mind, right? They had, right? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Is that the reality of any human is shaped in the mind. Like what anybody's experiencing, how they feel, what they think about the world, what did they think about their neighbor, how they feel, everything, is experienced through the mind. So the mind is the reality, right? People, you can't, nobody can experience the world outside of their mind. Because it, it, it determines your perspective because based on your mindset and your way of thinking and processing things, two people can experience the same situation, but it's a different experience for them. But it's a different reality. So the same experiences can create two realities. Mm -hmm. So they can go into a room and come out with different conclusions. Exactly. Right. We can experience clubhouse <laughs> and arrive at this different. Com so it's the same thing is that we are, we are all on planet Earth. We can all be born with, you know, we are all here in the same world, but the inner world of the individual is not the same. Exactly. Right. And that is shaped. One of the things I also say is like that inner world is shaped by what we accept and what we reject. Yes. And what you expose to your environment, 
um, you know, those because your your past environment kind of create your subconscious belief system. And that's more of a, a guide to how you respond and how you experience situations than it really is subconsciously. Because we, when you're experiencing it, that's we're experiencing it with our subconscious, with our conscious mind, but it's processed through our subconscious mind, which is based on our, our experience or how we perceive things past experience and you know mindset or just a culture yes let me break down a few of the things you're talking about like so like in one of my programs i actually drive these three things nature nurture culture okay nature nurture culture we've become the person we agreed to become mm -hmm. through exposure to your point programming on and on but here's also one thing i want to say about exposure we exposure becomes our mindset only when we accept what we are exposed to mm -hmm. because this is the differentiator of people who may be make who may come from the same neighborhood but turn out differently is that the exposure definitely influences the story we can soak up it's like the sponge effect is that we learn from our environment but there's also power to choose what you choose to learn from your environment. But it's not easy for an infant to make those choices. That's why as an adult, we can we can choose better. Right. So at the infant level, we are we are we are just natural sponges. We 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 believe everything we're told, we soak it all up, we become it. That programming is stronger when we are young. But it's not to say we cannot resist. You can always resist anything, anytime, but it's very, very tough. It's more difficult for an infant to resist parental guidance, right? The culture around them. But part of growing is uh, the, the, the more we grow, the more we, 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 we are supposed to shape, a, you know, take on a new, the identity we choose, right? It's this power of choice now. We can now choose to not accept whatever we accepted before, but that work in of itself requires a level of conscious consciousness awareness because that programming is now in the subconscious, is is operating, is ruling everything, is showing up. It, it has become the reality. But but we do have the power, even though we many people may not use the power, right? Many people may not use the power to check everything that is operating in their mind right. consciously subconsciously right but but one of the tests i now say is anything you don't like any any reality anything you are experiencing is also part of an agreement because your mind okay uh, let, let me just read a few things from that article because it gets quite interesting Okay. So with your with, with your words and welcome QB, uh, feel free to come up to the stage as well. I didn't even invite anybody, but anyway, anybody that shows up, we just have this conversation. So with your words, with your words, the world experiences us. Okay. That's the power of words, communication. That that's in itself. A lot of times it's a struggle because not everybody is is, is practiced in saying what they mean and meaning what they say. Right, so it's the thinking side and then the expressing side. How strong are we in expressing our thoughts, opinions, asserting ourselves, you know, powered by intentionality, on and on. And then um, I said, you are not your mind. However, your mind is your compass for navigating the world. That compass is, it's, okay, last week I was asking this question, what causes mid midlife crisis? And my own current conclusion, I mean, I, it can always change or evolve is that when suddenly we realize we've arrived where we, we didn't intend to arrive and we're trying to cause correct right and we're trying to cause correct but a lot of times people damage they do more damage because something that has taken years to create they now want to fix it overnight and that's why they they blame everybody they shoot everybody they cut everybody around there because they think externally is where the problem is but really it's 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 that soon very very soon everything you are accepting or rejecting will soon show up in the reality sooner or later right and when it shows up 
the power of taking charges you want whatever you want to show up make sure you're the one making it show up right because what what then happens is that when certain realities show up people are like whoa this wasn't my plan but guess what the programming was there right that mind programming was there and it was already leading them to this this destination by default one of the things i shared last i said by default the education system has created the perfect job right employee exactly. if you don't change that mindset right. you arrive at whatever age based on that programming exactly exactly and, and that like, is no, nothing is going to change go on please yeah and that's that's a part of you know when i say it's like it's subconscious so it's when we're in school everything that we learn from the time we are in kindergarten or whatever we are almost we're learned we're taught to memorize things in so many ways uh, uh, to make it repetitive like you know that you spend the the first year going through your numbers constantly repeating your numbers your abcs and you know you're doing math problems the subconscious to where we are not really taught to think i mean some of the um curriculums that you get into when you get into the sciences and things of that nature which i think is so fascinating is because that is really where um, people are really trained to think and trained to look for outcomes that may be different so I always know one plus one is going to be two, but who's ever trained to look at one plus one, maybe four. So we're not <laughs> for a different outcome. So we are taught to see if I go to work and if I do this job as an accountant, there's a certain expectation of what I'm supposed to do at the end of the day, end of the year, at the end of the week. I'm not trained to be creative. I'm not trained to expand my mind. I'm not trained to find out what other thoughts do I really have. So it's almost as if you're taught to think, and that's that subconscious. It's just ingrained in you, and it's your it's your your compass. It is, and it's the, it becomes the reality that everybody, most people experience, unless they disrupt it. Right. Exactly. Right? Yeah, and 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 <laughs> and, this, and it's gone. It's risky to challenge that for you know a lot of people. It's a risk. You're taking a risk because you when you when you step outside of the confines of what you've been repetitively taught, um, and you know it's built upon each grade as you go through. If you you stepping out to think differently and create something different, there's a risk that others are not going to be able to, to understand it, comprehend it, see it, or be excited about it. I agree. And and the reason I've, uh, because I've studied this so much, that's mm -hmm. why I kind of empathize. And that's why my biggest recommendation is that this self-education process, that we need to be gentle with ourselves and also understand why this is so difficult, why this is so risky. Like the more information, the reason I put a lot of things out there is that I believe the more information, the more awareness we can create. Like this is why creating a business, becoming an entrepreneur is difficult. It's not your fault, right? It's not our fault <laughs> that we are super smart. Like the system that gave you an A also gave you an F in creativity. <laughs> Exactly. Right? Yeah. Like you, right? The places everywhere where people are failing, health, mind, emotional stuff, spiritual stuff, is because there was no nothing educated us on how to be fit, eat well, think well, protect our hearts, protect our minds, spiritually fit. Thank God for the churches, right? The church, right? So part of this is this is the power of all of the things I put out there is that I believe the more people understand what is going on and why they feel what, the way they feel and why they're struggling and why it's so painful and where the, why they're afraid and why the risk is so high. The only reason is because you've not been educated. 
on how to do what you're trying to do. That's really it. Because if you are doing what you've been trained to do, it will be easy. Mm -hmm. Right? And that, go on, go on, please. You know, early on, we are, we are punished for curiosity. We are punished for, you know, coloring outside of the lines. We are, we are punished for not being obedient. And being obedient that is different from being respectful. But when you're not allowed to be curious about the things that you are thinking at an early age that you're curious about, then, you know, I see a lot of entrepreneurs that I talk to, uh, especially the ones in the creative space, they tend to have been labeled as a problem child in school. Rightly so, rightly so. Because that's, <laughs> this is deep. Because part of the um, programming is that, if you remember in school, you have to sit still mm -hmm. and be quiet and not make quote unquote noise for eight hours. Or oh, no, how many hours? I don't know, I went to boarding school. So literally <laughs> I was living 24 hours in the system. But but I loved boarding school because the experience wasn't just academic. I lived on campus. So outside of the school system, we also had our own mind. So I think overall that, that was that was good because because we were free in a way outside of that time of, of being in class. But but once you're in class, right, for the duration of being in class, you're supposed to sit still. Do what you are being told to do. Ask minimal questions. Don't challenge the teacher. Don't make noise. And isn't that the perfect replica of the workplace today? Exactly, it is. It is the exact replica of the workplace. So it's like you're not, you're not, you mentioned that you're not allowed to ask questions, but you are allowed, you are expected to answer questions and answer questions exactly the way <laughs> to hear. within the frame framework the teacher already gave you if you answer that question outside of the test book you will fail <laughs> if you come up with your own answer <laughs> oh my gosh my 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 so so that's what we're dealing with today okay i also said here your mind is not your destiny Mm -hmm. but it is a mirror into your reality but your mind can lead you your mind can lead you to your destiny if you program it to get there exactly if your reality is sorry i said exactly because right. you have to feed it or you know it's, it's feeding that curiosity give it more information exactly and the beautiful thing also is it's supposed to it's supposed to help us get to where we want to get to, but it is dependent. It is only as useful as the information we loaded the mind with, because yeah. we all came to this world with a blank, as a blank slate, and then we were programmed. So for example, if you want to be a doctor, guess what? They will program us to function as a doctor. You read a ton of books, you get instructions, you get training, and all of a sudden, boom, you're a medical doctor. Exactly. It's that's why as an entrepreneur right now it's the reason i teach and coach in my school is that i've realized that until you train yourself to think as an entrepreneur to develop skills of communication branding marketing sales it's the results will not show up you've got to change completely how you think who you are you've got to develop new skills for success you've got to activate your inner creativity you've got to pursue yeah. right right because this is these things they're opposites to one another the employee sits still the employee is told to sit down and everything you need will be brought to you the entrepreneur is not supposed to sit still exactly it's like the entrepreneur is supposed to be pursuing every day and, right and, exactly and and the, to be successful as an entrepreneur like most of us go into business well, most entrepreneurs, I would say a lot of entrepreneurs, go into business based on a skill set they've learned. 
But being really good at that skill set, but not understanding the other aspects of a business like marketing, sales, operations, technology, you're not successful. Yes, yes. And, and this is one of the things I actually teach on that. The technical skill you're bringing that you want to commercialize is step one. But the business structure you build around that skill is actually what will determine success in business, right? Yeah. Because that skill is, is what you're giving to your employer, but your employer has the systems, the strategy, the framework to market your skills collectively. But when you want to bring your skills directly into the marketplace, the world doesn't care what you know or what you can do if you don't tell the world who you are and what you can do for them. Exactly. Right. If you don't build systems that will allow you to develop, deploy and, and deliver value, you've got to speak value. You've got to, you know, deliver value. You've got to articulate value. You've got to sell value. And that is a skill in of itself. So you, you may have a valuable skill, but if you cannot sell it, if you cannot market it, if you cannot build a structure behind it to support it, mm -hmm. then you don't have a business. And I see a whole lot of that. Right. When you're not building assets, when you're not building equity, when you are not building a brand, there's very little people can do five years after they start. Right. Because the business is them and they are the business. There's no structure. There's no equity. There's no assets tied to the business. Right. So you're absolutely right. The skill is fantastic, but the skill is not a business structure. You've got to build a business structure to support the skill being sold in the marketplace. You've got to build systems. You've got to build a whole lot of things behind the skills, like Beyonce. Beyonce has incredible skills, but Beyonce, trust me, people are not giving her credit. She's a businesswoman. I mean, this, yeah, exactly. Her, Rihanna as well, you know, because it's, and that's the perfect example. So you, there, are, there are artists and singers that sing better than Beyonce much better, but they are employee minded. They go on the label, the label tell them what they what to do. They are not thinking outside of it. And then once they go and they get a contract, not understanding the contract, they're limited in what they can do. And they're not building outside of their brand, outside of singing. And so you see some great singers that will really run rings around Beyonce but because they don't have the business savvy behind it they're just singers great singers absolutely so talent is not big i love this let me bring uh miss qb over to you i saw your reaction as well thank you for being here you know thank you for holding the space it's loved lovely to see women of color getting together talking about things that truly matter so we can get ahead as a collective as people um and 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 you know i want to touch on something i think i mean you all said something so gorgeous i love it god is great when you resonate and you, god sends you say hey check out what's going on you never know what you can learn so i want to say thank you for just being you and sharing this space you know um i i've always wanted to be an entrepreneur my mom was an entrepreneur she was a businesswoman in the caribbean jamaica she she created dolls she had you know she had had her she had her stuff she was a very wealthy woman very very wealthy woman in caribbean and when she came to canada her skills didn't translate because it's a different type of hustle in canada you've got to have paper to back it you got to have to have a team you got you, you got to do all these things and my mom wasn't educated in that frame mind right so she kind of lost hope because what she wanted to do was continue that that asset um so when I watched her, I, I, I watched how she, she she lost her faith and what was different in, in Jamaica and what was different here. And, and, and as I leaving my childhood home at a very early age, I realized, like I think uh, Shirley said, or you said, Tanya, is, is that we are not trained to be entrepreneurs. We are tra trained to regurgitate information. And for if you want to become a, an entrepreneur, I realized you have to unlearn most of the things that you have been taught because it's about regurgitating information and entrepreneurship from my personal opinion is about creating the divine gift that was in you into a into a monetary you know uh goal to to take it from another one level and then 
take it to another level. So I have learned that, you know, in order to become who I am, and I'm, I'm having a really great time um, creating my, my foundation, my, my, uh, my branding, using something as simple as conversation and turning that into a business. But I had to unlearn all of, all of it and allow the divine spirit who put that gift in me to say, this is how you elevate elevate it. Not only do you talk, talk, connect, um, learn the skill of marketing. Oh my God, I did not realize that maybe 70%, 60% of what you create should go back into marketing because on this on this platform, uh, the internet, if you're not seen, people don't see you. So I love what you're saying. Um, and, 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 and a lot of people don't know it. I, you know, a lot of people think, oh, I can sing. I'm going to be famous. No, 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 no. Beyonce, for me personally, Beyonce, if you're listening to this anywhere, I think you're a wonderful th singer. But I could go to the depths of, 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 of anywhere, New York, the ghetto, and find a voice that would be kick ass, but they don't have the marketable skills. They don't have the team behind them or education. So I think people need to know just to define the difference. And I love how you define the difference. That's great. You could sing, you could dance. But can you turn that into a profitable business? And, and if anybody ever was looking at Destiny's Child, she they told the story. It's Destiny's Child, not children. She was destined for stardom, right? It's not Destiny's Children. It's Destiny's Child. She was chosen to be that. And she did it. And I'm proud of her. I mean, it, it, and I think all of us need to learn that, 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 um, that energy. You've got to have a team. You've got to know the business. You've got to have the passion. There are so many pieces. So thank you to both of you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, yes. And, and let me dive a little into what you're saying, because this is so important. It starts with what you see in your mind. Because you, you're supposed to be fighting to create what you see for yourself. Nobody does that fight for you. Nobody right is that you talked about destiny's child is that beyonce saw herself doing what she's doing today and that's what she's invested in whenever we say invest in yourself da, 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 like people don't get it that this is not this is about you your future your life your destiny your legacy what are you putting into making sure that you don't end up where you don't want to end up because by default People just need to sit down with 80, 70 year old people and, and let them tell their story. You don't want to live with regrets. You don't want to arrive in that future with a bunch of stories of what you could have done if ABCD had happened. You create what you want to see. You create the legacy you desire. Nobody creates this for you. Nobody gave Beyonce who she is today. She gave, this is the gift she gave herself. Right. Yeah. This is the gift you, you give yourself what God has given you. Right. What God will give you is the picture. I say your vision is the picture of your destination. Every child has a picture of who they're supposed to be here on it. Their greatness, their destiny is in them. Our job or the job of the system was supposed to help us unleash that in the world, the gifts, right, the calling. But guess what? The system had another agenda for the industrial era. Exactly. The, the education system was designed to serve the industrial era, the needs of the industrial era, the skills necessary to support the industrial era. That's what we spent the first 21 years of our lives pursuing, right? Basic needs of human food, clothing, shelter. Everybody needs food, clothing, shelter. The government doesn't want to do that. So here's what the government would do. Everybody go get a skill so that you can sell, so that you can have a livelihood and get your own food, clothing, shelter. That's the system. But beyond food, clothing, shelter, the self-actualized person is here to do meaningful work in the world. But here's the key. Most of the, most of the world now stops at food, clothing, shelter, which was what the job was for so that you won't depend on the government for basic needs, so that you will have a skill that is marketable in the industrial era. And the industrial era will buy that skill from you. Your engineering skill, your accounting skill, your law degree, your medical skill, they are useful in the world. But today, as we're shifting to the creator economy, we can see major shifts and the flaws in that system. Is that for you to be a creator, for you to create, you've got to now disrupt all of the programming that that era programmed us to functioning. 
<laughs> you've got to go back yes, yes. right love, you, you know that. yes you have to go back there and that's where we now start talking about personal development mindset coaching skill development training like my school why because if you're struggling be gentle with yourself the only reason you, it's like if i give you a stethoscope and i said you're a medical doctor go perform you can't perform what you don't know how to perform if i gave you a plane and i say fly this plane well guess what you didn't spend six years learning to fly that boeing plane so that's what's going on is that you have this dream you have this idea it's in your hand but you've not been trained on how to create in the world what you see in your mind what we are supposed to do is to do exactly what was done to us to go on a new journey of self-discovery self-education that's all because if you invest five years in training yourself if you invest a year in acquiring the skills on the other side of that journey is an evolved you the next level version of you will be able to get the next level results but guess what we don't know why we're struggling that's the first thing is that we are not aware we know we're struggling we know there's pain we know there's stress Right, we're trying everything, we're giving it all we've got. That's not enough. We're not seeing the results we desire. But part of this journey, the reason I do all this content and stuff is just to create, first of all, create awareness. Right? We need to create awareness of why there's a struggle. Is that we're trying to do what we've not been coached, trained, prepared for, but we have to. And also the sad thing is that most people give up in the middle of that struggle because without help, without support, trust me, right? Imagine trying to be a doctor without training, uh -huh. without, without the school system, painful. And now we're trying to become entrepreneurs. We're trying to be the ultimate creator. We're trying to create, we're trying to build empires. We're trying to build businesses and we're doing it all by ourselves. And it's painful. Exactly. I love, one of, I love yeah. it. It's very, um, it's very, um, I, I found that and I realized that, you know, you need a you need a support system you need the support system and that's that's what my my business my entrepreneurial journey is on is teaching people about self-care that's what it's all about um and making that into an enterprise and teaching people that to 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 have self-care meanings to make those decisions that are outside of the box that will nurture your best self that will nurture the god spirit within you that has create that wants to become that that independent spirit in the world um it, it i think a lot of people are afraid to to say that i want my own business because they think it's selfish i need to just stick like you said i just need to stick with something that gives me food and clothes on my back but i do believe in my heart um that the great divine however you want to see it, the great god wants us to not just to survive but be plentiful, be abundant. And, and I really believe that entrepreneurship, at least from my point of view, is definitely the road for me. But I do find that it you need the support system. You need to, to, to learn the skills. And I know the one thing that I jumped on was not only marketing, was also the, the AI, you know, learning these, these, these new tools that can help you. A lot of the pe people who are seeing this are afraid, but I really believe that we need to learn them. So, you know, I went out and I've been spending last year just learning the, how to prompt the AI, how to use it, how to make it, you know, useful to, enhance my entrepreneurial journey and you know Tom, just to talk to what you're saying it, the hardest thing i found on the journey was changing the mindset and i'm going to be a little bold here from slave mentality <laughs> to creator mentality it was very difficult and i'm so proud that i'm making the transition but it really takes a mindset and it's like exercising if you want if you want your, your little hips to come down and your butt to go down and your belly to fall down you got to do the work so i i, I had to do the work to learn how to get my mindset into um the default of i am wealthy i am abundant i'm enough i'm amazing i i can do this as a child it was easy i just woke up happy but now as an adult, you got to put some work into it. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for this space. I have a client soon, but I just want to say I, I came in to support you because every time I see you, the, the I, I'm I'm doing something and I don't want to just pop in and pop out. 
So I want to say thank you so much. And anytime you have a, a room, please allow me, you know, ping me, whatever you got to do. I don't know what they call it. Ping, catch, kick. I don't know what they do these days, but um, just let me know because it's important that we know that it's not our fault. Be compassionate with yourself. It takes it takes a village to actually get your mindset to change. Right. So thank Absolutely. you. So Absolutely. Thank you. I'm, I mean, I'll be I'll be here for a few more moments. Um, and then I'm going to pop out. But thank you, because I really appreciate love, not appreciate hate. I appreciate love what you're doing. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Even um, so I'm on a book. Um, should I say book tour? I don't even know. Media tour for my book. It's actually titled Mindset of an Entrepreneur. I also run a TV show here in Illinois with the same title based on my book. So this is something big, huge for me. And when I was being interviewed today, you know, I said it's like the lion in the zoo versus the lion in the wild. The DNA is the same, but when parts of you has been um, put into dormancy, right? You're not thriving. You're in, a, you're in a condition you weren't created for. Yes, there's breakfast, lunch, and dinner served to you. Yes, you, you, you display all the things they want you to do, but there's still parts of you that wants to be set on fire, that wants to be unleashed. Yeah. And this is the struggle that people are facing. Is yes, the the job is great. Yes, the pay is fantastic. Yes, there's a roof over my head. On and on and on. But everybody knows, if deep, 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 if they would admit deep, deep, deep within them, there's the there's an itch. There's an itch that they want to scratch, and that itch is God given. It's supposed to be your destiny calling. It's what you're here to do. It's the dreams, the ideas, the legacy you're supposed to use your life to create. And many people do not create what they're supposed to create in the world because again, it's survival mode. It's survival mode. That's what we've been sold. But again, Mas Maslow's hierarchy of need, that's still fundamental. The big, every, every time, you, if all you're worrying about is food, clothing, and shelter, that is the base of all of this is that there are risks. Those who are ready to take risks are the ones that go to the top. You never arrive at the top without taking any risk. But exactly. we've been cultured never to take risks, mm -hmm. right? Which is part of the challenge. You cannot be a successful entrepreneur without being a risk taker, period. So if all you're looking for is safety, then you stay at the base of that pyramid. Yeah, right? that's all. Amen, sister, amen. <laughs> It's ingrained in us to do the safe thing. Mm -hmm. It's to do the and and not to not to experience. Like I say, you punish for being curious, and so it's like just that. You know, of course, when a kid is you know starting to walk, if the stove is hot, we want the kid to know the stove is hot. But that's still a part of the conditioning to not. Like, oh, I can't, is, is ingrained in that kid's mind to never touch the stove because the stove may be hot. But that too is a part of the conditioning that for some of it is good, but it, it, it's the beginning of the limitation of the thinking. You know, we're not allowed to dream. And when you look at, the Bible, what did God tell Abraham to do? <laughs> Look at the Dream. sky. Yeah. Dream of what's possible, not just I now, but the next generations to come. Exactly. Yeah. And every life. And Go on, please. was told that you're going to be a uh, UNM nations. And it's like, I don't even have a child. How is that possible? But that set a fire to figure out how to make it happen, even to the point that Sarah was like, well, hey, if I can't do it, let's go over here with the maid. <laughs> <laughs> but right. I have to give them credit is that they realize this is our dream. This what was she thinking, though, going to the maid? <laughs> <laughs> that one, what, it's just like, what was Eve thinking eating the apple? Like... Ooh, that's another. Let's not open that stuff. It's 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 that. <laughs> and again, you know, that is that's another space. It's like she had everything but one thing, and she gave up everything to get the one thing. Right. It's it's that if what you're pursuing is safety, then 
really is this journey for the for the person no, because it's actually it's actually counter what what we're talking about is that there, there, there is no guarantee but the only guarantee is that you will unpack yourself right you know that's that, a guarantee that. the guarantee that. is that you will attain the highest fullest expression of your own you will live your life that's the only guarantee yeah you right see, i'd love that you know my mother as i said i love resonating with this my mother had an expectation for me and and i and i and I, when i was younger i faulted her for it she said you know and you know she came to canada she had to live in the ontario housing ontario housing is government housing and she had to live in government housing and i got to a point when she i think i was about 11 years old because that's when i left my childhood home she said to me you know make sure that when you're ready i'm gonna hook you up with government housing she had a very low expectation but that was her highest expectation because she had she had been in the shit. and i realized that when i left the child my childhood home and this is all about taking risk i took a risk because i remember the voice of god within me that said if i don't leave now whatever it wouldn't happen and i took a chance i mean there was a lot of toxicity sexual abuse yada 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 um and when i left there i was very very blessed to see very successful black women and i had never seen that before i remember when i saw my first black doctor i almost shit myself i was like what because I, I i never saw that reflection because my mom had left her hope at the door and i, I don't know if i felt like picking it up but i love I love the fact that, you know, you really have to change your mindset. You really have to really undo what is done in your life to really achieve that. And if you don't have a vision, and I always wrote it down, put a piece of paper, talk to God, I don't know what, wrote it in a book. I always said, this is what I wanna do. I wanna talk to people. I wanna be the go-to for mental health. And it is coming to coming to pass but I had to have the vision. I had to have the idea. I had to want it because then the universe doesn't know how to help me if I don't want it. So I had to put my thought process into play and say, I want it, I'm open to it and I'm willing to take, take risks. And I've taken a lot of risks. I've left everything behind. I've traveled around the world to talk to people. And I tell you, that was one of the best piece of educational tools I had, it was talking to people. So when you say take risks, you're right. You have to um, be, you know, it's up to you. I can't tell you, go do it, take a risk. I knew for wherever I was, I, I left everything behind. And at, at about age 26, I sold my condo. I did everything. My At the time I was, I was just dating my boyfriend. He's now my husband. And I left everything behind, traveled to North uh, South America and spent a year on the grace of God to saying, just go there and do what I was told. And I went there and we dug holes, we created, we created relationships and we took a risk. And because of that risk, this is how my entrepreneur came, a ship came out because I realized there was a need and I, and I wanted to fill that need. So, um, and self-care was that need. People are afraid of taking care of themselves. They think it's selfish. They're afraid they forget that they need to take care of themselves first. And sometimes people need a little um, education about that. So taking a risk is, I'm all about that, all about that. And I, and I love that. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, and you talked about self-care. It is one thing that I've come to also realize is that energy is scarce in the world. And, and the world is, is powered by energy. And part of this entire journey is that women's energy continues to be tapped in to power the world. And, the, and women do not know how to power their own to refuel, right? It is, is that like we're an energy being, our spirit is energy, our mind, thoughts, energy, our emotions, passion, energy, your body also is energy, a place of energy. That's why we eat food to power the body, right? But here's the key. All of those four needs to be replenished, right? And how we do so spiritual practices, mental mindset program, clearing your place of emotion, right? Like boundaries, <laughs> don't let anybody torment your heart. They don't belong there, right? Physical boundary also, right? But here's the key, back to the education system. The education system never exposed us to these core spaces that actually is important to living a fulfilled life. 
So as a creator now, because you are going to now need so much energy to power this creator life. If you're an employee, one of the things I say is that an, um, an animal that is, um, excuse me, hibernating leads, needs less energy. If you're not running, if you're not chasing something, you need less energy. But the moment you, you become an entrepreneur, you now need to fuel energy. You now need to be, to conserve, you now need to, should I say, manage your energy properly so that you're not leaking, you're not, you're not putting it in the wrong spaces, right? So there's now a new type of discipline that an entrepreneur has to abide by, right? And if you're a woman, if you're a man, like, listen, there's this new practice that the employee will say, oh, I don't need to do personal development. No, I don't need a morning routine. No, I don't need to do exercises because guess what? You are still running on a low energy requirement. But when you become an entrepreneur, listen, all, all parts of you will come alive. Your mind, your emotion, your heart, everything, everything. Entrepreneurship takes, it, it activates all sides of you. While you're sleeping, while you're awake, like you're always on... <laughs> You're always creating, you're always thinking, you're always doing, you're always, right? And so part of that journey also is now making sure you're caring for that self because that self is now being used at the highest optimal, right? Part of you. It's like if you use a car and you don't take it into the gas, um, to the mechanic to tune it and refuel it and take care of it, then that's what's also happening is that the entrepreneur now is going through more use right our body our mind our emotion we are applying ourselves in ways that an average person will not have to do and because of that self-care again is actually even more important for us so yeah that that's so that's true absolutely over to you miss shelley and then i'll start wrapping up shortly thank you uh, yeah i totally agree with that because um one thing as an entrepreneur you know we, we you just talked about you know we go to school for eight hours and then it's mirrored when we go into the workplace. You go into the workplace, you, you have like eight hour shifts. But as an entrepreneur, we don't have those parameters preset for us. We have to set them. And when you are driven by your mission and your passion, sometimes we go until we drop. <laughs> and so, it is so important that you have, um, you know, you put in your, your self care because you are your greatest asset. And if you're not optimal health, your optimal weight, you know, I, I remember like for myself once, um, particularly after I started working from home, I wasn't as active as, as I was when I worked downtown Chicago and was walking, you know, 10, 20 blocks to the train, from the train and things of that nature. And the first time I realized that I was out of shape, I was traveling to, um, I think it was North Carolina or South Carolina. And I had to change flights in Atlanta. And that airport is crazy. <laughs> and so I'm trying to run to catch my flight and I'm almost having a heart attack. I was like, what in the world is going on? <laughs> Why is my heart beating 200 beats a minute? But not realizing that I wasn't strengthening my body and I was out of shape. But that's because, you know, sitting at home, working from home, you sit at your desk and, you know, you're eating on the fly and things of that nature. So, yeah, you really have to take care of it because it's easy to get caught up in what you're doing and then just totally forget about the basic things that you need to do as an entrepreneur. Trust me, it's, it's, a, it's a journey. We're learning as we go and we are adjusting. Also, that's also the beautiful thing about this life is nothing is set in mindset. Right. Nothing, need, nothing needs to be set. Mm -hmm. You can change your mind. When we, it's like the saying, when we know better, we do better. But here's the key, if we are not pursuing knowledge, if we are not actively opening ourselves to new information, new ways of being, new ways of thinking, new ways of elevating ourselves, then trust me, then the person is stuck. Right. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? It's, it's that at the end of the day, if you do not actively, because there's a lot of dormancy now, because one of the other thing is that the most successful people, what I found in that system, the employee mindset system, they are the people 
that deny this work more. Because they've been rewarded by that system, AAA plus, you're smart, right? IQ. They've not invested in EQ. Starting mm -hmm. with their own emotion, being in tune with their own spirit, their own mind, their own energy space, their own emotion, their own physical body. And when you deny yourself, you're going to deny your world. This is part of the journey when it comes to relationship issues is that most people who deny their own being from thinking, being, and expressing, right, their, their self as they are, saying what they mean and meaning what they say, here's the key. They will deny the people they are in relationship with to express themselves as well. It's the bedrock of most relationship issues in the world. Is that when you are not in tune, when you don't give yourself permission to be expressive, when you don't own your own feeling, you continue to deny yourself, deny yourself, you will likely deny everybody around you. So when your spouse is telling you, I'm not happy, I'm this, you will shut them down because you've been used to shutting yourself down. When yeah. somebody's saying, I'm not this, your kids are telling you, daddy, 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 you're like, no, sit down. You do to them what was done to you. Right, that's true. And you start that circle all over again, right? Is that the same thing that was done to you, that shuts you down, that made you who you are, you, in the next generation, you make it, you, you, you pass it on again. And that's why this work is important. If you don't fix you, if you don't fix this thing, listen, you replicate yourself in everything around you. Exactly. And that is so true. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this is the power of this reality is you, your mind does not need to be set other than value system. For me, spirituality, Bible, listen, nothing is moving in that place. Everything else is about learning, right. learning. We are learning. We came into this world to learn right. because once you learn, once you learn, there's nothing you can do. There's no stopping you. But when you don't learn, <laughs> limited mindset, limited, listen, everything is limited because here's the key. We can't operate outside of what we know. Exactly. You cannot use information that is not within your disposal. That is not within, right? You can't use, Google has, there's abundance of knowledge in the world. There's knowledge of all spaces, real estate, technology, AI. Knowledge is abundant. Google has told us, AI, ChatGPT has told us, knowledge is everywhere except where in your mind. <laughs> <laughs> knowledge is abundant. What is like water. Water is everywhere in the world. But if you don't drink it, <laughs> you'll yeah. be thirsty. Exactly. Exactly. But you know, yeah. that it goes back the educational system which say knowledge is everywhere but we were really taught to learn what was necessary to pass the test yes but there are other tests going on now life itself is a test it's testing us our yeah. relationships are testing us kids are testing us <laughs> entrepreneurship is testing us money finance testing us mind th like we, we are on the exam the key is where are you passing and where are you failing <laughs> if this if, if if each person will be will be uh kind enough to evaluate themselves and be honest exactly. and anyway anyway you see an f you can fix it. Go and right. take a course. Go and take a class. Go and pursue those who are excelling. Go and find um, uh, one one of the beautiful things I've been saying about the coaching industry, why I love it so much and why I now also serve in that space is that the education system was for the industrial era, what the coaching, coaching world was built up to support the individual self that wants to right, be more productive, right? right. Is that in the old world, we were promised the healthcare system. How long will a doctor see you? Five minutes, 10 minutes, maximum 15 minutes. Is 15 minutes enough for you to design, right, the, the healthy side of you? No. So everything in the old system was geared towards mass production. The healthcare system, right, unless you really, really, really need it, right, it doesn't show up for your daily life. But guess what? You can find an health coach today that will sit with you help you to craft a, a, a food, the type of food you can feed your family. They will invest more time to help you and support you. Okay, fitness. Before, right, if you go to the health industry, until it is terrible, they are not helping you. Right. Right, until, until you really, really need the health system, 
they're not going to fix you until you is broken. But do we really need to break ourselves before we go? But guess what? You can find a fitness coach. You can find a dietitian. You can find all these people in the coaching industry because that coaching industry is going to keep growing because it's growing to serve individuals, right? The education system was designed to serve systems, the machine, the industrial era, where we, everything is a machine mass production. But guess what? With COVID-19, what do we all want? We want personalized support. Right, exactly. Right? So everybody's like, go to your um, your mindset, um, your therapist. Everybody's looking for therapy. Why? It's expensive, but you're going to get one-on-one -on -one and you're going to get a space to think through your thoughts and for, for tools to live your life better. We are all now looking for life at a better way, not just money. Exactly. Not just money, not just shoes, not just handbags. We are all striving to live a better life. And well, maybe not all, let me, let me, let me rephrase that. Everybody that is striving to live a better life now has access, right? At least they can, they can buy in the marketplace of the coaching industry, personalized support in all areas. In every area. Right? In every area, literally you can find some, like you can find help on how to teach your kids, one of my clients does, um, home, like if you're homeschooling and you need materials to, to train, like there is, everything is now, you can shop <laughs> for personalized support. But here's the key, until you admit that you want something better than you're having, this is where the gap is. Most people haven't, haven't arrived at this conclusion that they even need support. That's part of the conversation. Most people don't know there's this lack of awareness that you don't have to suffer, right? But you will suffer if you don't go out and get the help you need. As long as you are waiting, oh, the government will do this. Listen, the government will not fix, fix your relationship. It won't fix your health. It won't fix any of these things, right? The employer is not going to fix the life. <laughs> Listen, but here's the key. It's the personal responsibility we now have. If you're a mom, you're, you, 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 you're, like, listen, we are carrying so much responsibility that we weren't prepared for, we weren't equipped for, we, we don't have the skills for or the tools. But guess what? Somebody else has that skill. That's why I always say we're here to use our strength. I can use my strength to serve other people. Other people can use their strength to serve me. I don't have to be, right? But yeah, if we exactly. don't open up ourselves, if we yeah. don't open up ourselves to seek help, if we are not aware that there are places that we are failing and we don't have to fail, there are subjects you can take that will totally help you. There are mindset programs, there are emotional stuff you can do, there are, there are experts everywhere. Just make sure you do your due diligence to research. Don't just jump on, <laughs> which is another side downside of the industry is that because it's not largely re regulated, right? People just say what they say and if you believe them, right? So you want to also do your due diligence to do deep research and speak to other people that have used those services. But other than that, we, we are now on a, on a different journey. The world is different now. We want personalized support, right? We want to, we want to live the unique life that's, our fingerprints are unique. Your fingerprints is, is unique, right? Your ideas are distinct to you. Your dreams are unique to you. They are God-given. And God, God has a way of giving everybody's talents and skills to help you get there. Well, if we don't explore this internal universe, hmm, you are living somebody else's dream. Exactly. Dream, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I want to thank you. It's, it's, this was a great conversation because, I mean, all the things I put out there is first of all, just to create awareness. You need the support. You need help. If, 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 if you want something better than you're already getting. Exactly. And also this, just be em empath this empathy, be gentle. We have to be gentle with ourselves instead of beating ourselves down. Many people are beating themselves down right now. Why can't you do this? How come, you know, and I, and I say this is like, if you see people swimming, it's because they learned how to swim. Please do not jump into the ocean without training yourself on how to swim. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. So I don't want people be, don't beat yourself because you cannot swim just go and train if you want to swim go and train how to swim and you will be able to swim exactly. like that's one thing i say like be gentle be gentle we have to be kind to ourselves but i see people beating themselves down because why we are smart yes you are smart based on the knowledge you have you're not smart based on the knowledge you do not have 
Exactly. But yes. again, Mars, that goes go on, please. To the um, school system where, you know, you, you fail for not having the exact answer. Hmm. And so and it's only be yeah, and it's yeah, wow. And it's only really because we we didn't have the answer within us. Mm -hmm. Right? So people feel when you don't have the answer within you or when you've not developed the skill, because skill only develops once you have the knowledge and you practice, 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 skill improves over time. Exactly. This is good. This is juicy stuff. Uh, Miss Lorraine, thank you for being here. I'm actually wrapping up now. <laughs> this was really good. Good stuff. Okay. Yeah. Any passing words, Miss Shelley? Thank you so much for the conversation and joining me today. Oh, no, this was great. I'm so glad we had a chance to connect. And I just happened to look at my phone and see you were on. And I was like, oh, I have a few minutes. I actually have a call coming in at 530. And so I, I'm excited to connect with you and you know, this is, you're doing great work. I see what you're doing. I'm so proud of you and just really even encouraged by you, your work that you're doing. So I really appreciate oh. it. So important. This is so important. You know, as we, oh. we are in a new economy, we're in a new era. And this is a perfect opportunity for us to explore, explore who we really are and the gifts that we're able to bring to the world. And there's so much support, whether it's through coaching, as you said, through coaching or through mentorship. And there's so much that's out there to help us build in those areas where we don't know everything. And having the courage to say, I don't know this and I need help here is so important. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for that summary as well, because this is the conversation I'm, I'm, I'm having in my community and I'm having with the world. First of all, let's create awareness of how we how we got here. And then let's start figuring out what we need to know, what we need to do to get ourselves from where we are to where we actually want to be. And all things are possible to those that we believe, right? That's that's what I believe is that you can do it, but we need to train ourselves for success. We need to invest in the knowledge and the capacity in building the capacity that will help us achieve the results like in the world of business we talk about leverage is that opportunities is like a river is flowing but if you take a spoon if all you have is a spoon you're only going to get a spoonful while the rest of the world is getting a, a, a trailer load <laughs> you know cup full <laughs> or bucket full you get to just you get to decide yeah what you're going to use to scoop opportunities in the world, particularly in the world of business. If you don't build leverage, if you don't build capacity, if you are not hungry, you won't be satisfied. Your hunger determines the level of satisfaction, right? And you can see everybody you're seeing on the newspaper, they are hungry. If you're not hungry, if a lion is not hungry, you can feed its peanuts. Mm -hmm. But when a lion is hungry, listen, you go for more. Right. Be the Oliver Twist. Be the Oliver Twist. <laughs> ask for more. Huh? The world will yield to you more if you ask for more. And if you say you are okay, right? Mm -hmm. Which is also part of the journey of that is not aligned. People, people are not aligned. Within them, they want more, but they are showing up in a passive way. Oh, well, if they promote me, yes. Listen, nothing, not, you, you're not getting that promotion because those who want promotion, they are lobbying for it. They are negotiating for it. They are working hard for it. That's also the, the, the leftover of, of that education system. They say, sit still, wait your turn. We will bring you dinner. Listen, <laughs> the people who told you that story, they are, they are only bringing you crumbs. Exactly. They are bringing you leftovers. If at all they bring you anything, if at all they rem rem remember you, if at all they remember the story they concocted to eliminate you from that race, mm -hmm. you are being eliminated from the race if you are not running in the race and you make it easier for the rest of the world. Anyway, <laughs> this is funny, but not funny. But <laughs> thank you so much. Um, I'll see you all <laughs> around the corner. Um, God bless you. And the link to my school is up above, towingumessary.academy. Lorraine, I'll see you. Go, go on. Take care. Oh, take care, take care now. Bye.